Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Brad Lance. Here we go, buddy. Did you know I got theme music? I got everything, buddy. I have heard it. Okay, so this is my friend, Brad Lance, who is Bradley Lance. On, on, I asked him, do you want me to call Brad or Brad? Bradley said Brad. So, Brad, right. we have not talked in such a long time, and I love this podcast we were just talking about. And maybe we'll talk about this. Um, you are actually looking about uh, publishing a book. That's and right. Yeah. Talking about that, and you're asking me for some advice. So we're going to talk about that because I think a lot of people would be interested. Um, you know, because your your book that you're talking about is actually really about the focus of the process of learning and how important that is. And when we talk, we're like, hey, and share the process of writing the book because I think that'd be really beneficial. But we'll talk about that on a, a, a upcoming podcast. But today I'm going to start with the three questions. And um, okay. the first question is. Uh, when you think of your role and you're the director of technology and innovation, or is it director of innovation and technology? Does it matter? It doesn't matter, but the official title is director of technology and innovation. Director of technology. So you're the, you're the D-A-T-I. Sure. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> sure. You're That's the, a good acronym. Director yeah. of tech, D-O-T-A-I. The That's dote. right. You're the dote. So there you go. I so, love it. Uh, yeah, that's what people call you. Anyway, so... You've had an amazing career. We've connected for years. But when you look back at your own educational experience, whether it's a, as a student, as a colleague, who is a teacher that inspired you and why? Yeah, so when I was in elementary school, I had a teacher named Mrs. Ippolito, and she really just challenged me in a completely different way. Um, she was actually a gifted and talented teacher. And I was in this really small program called FLAG. Uh, that's That was called Focus on Learning for the Academically Gifted. And we had to take a test in order to get in, but it was all about abstract thinking and mm -hmm. right brain, right? So we really didn't really matter that we were academically doing well, getting good grades. It was really about your aptitude and how well you could perform on these right brain style tests. And so it was was all about creativity. It was all about being spontaneous. And I learned so many life lessons about learning and about getting excited to learn and just being curious from her. Um, we did different activities like this game called Spontaneous where she would bring in an object and we would all sit in a circle and we would go around the circle and we'd have to come up with a completely different use for the object. And we would have to just go, you know, really quickly around in a circle. And sometimes we would go around twice and three times. Um, and, and so that was awesome. We also did projects where we would make inventions, you know, and this was back in early nineties and, and, um, uh, this type of stuff wasn't really happening in the normal classroom. You know, it was a, it was a pullout section. And so once a week for an entire day, um, you know, I would work with this teacher in a really intimate setting and just was able to to really branch out and try new things that I would never have been able to do in the classroom. And um, she just really made a lasting impression on me, made me think differently about things and, and really took a time and an interest in, in getting to know me personally. And, sorry, what was her name? Mrs. Mrs. Ippolito. Mrs. But Ippolito. Yeah, for short, we called her Mississippi, which sounded like the state <laughs> Mississippi. So we were just like, Mississippi. Yeah. Well, hey, Mississippi, if you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shout out you didn't, i told you that was gonna be awesome you didn't, you didn't know that was coming right so, i didn't know i love that hey so the so what what i love about this you know obviously focused on the podcast called the innovators mindset um you know really developing that creativity i think like this is something that like i i've always wrestled with is that there is a place for like you know teaching kids to like you know draw within the lines right and you know write in the blank there there is that process it's like how, like it's our life right it's how we do taxes right yeah and just be creative with our taxes because if <laughs> right. you, you go to jail right, right. And that's kind of how that goes but i think part of it too is that focus on you know developing innovation right and it's kind of you know i think the perception is that when you're um in a program that's you know is focused and i, I always say this is that uh there is a difference between your smartest kids and your most academically gifted. Cause I think when we say academically gifted, it's sometimes kids that are just really good at the things that school promotes. Right. They're good at school. Right. right. Yeah. But, but some kids that, that, you know, are, are really gifted in other areas that aren't school focused, but they have these talents. I think part of that is no matter what programs we're in, we bring out the best in our kids that we actually get them to think in different ways to, to develop their skills. So I love that. So, you know, going into uh, the next question and, you know, your role, as a dote, sure. 
as the dope thing, <laughs> right? Uh, That's going to stick now. Right, right. Is, uh, you, you know, you've connected with a lot of administrators. or I'm sure you work side by side with the time you're one yourself, obviously. Um, so when you think of administrators in your experience, who's someone that really sticks out to you and why? Yeah, so her name is Ann McCarty, and she was my very first principal ever in my first teaching job. Um, it was awesome. She acted like a mentor to me and really cared personally for me and, and interested in me and my success. Um, and she saw something in me that she really um, wanted to elaborate and extend on because after the first couple years, she asked me to fill a completely new role that mm-hmm. I had no intention on on doing. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a technology teacher and I was a math and science teacher. And she noticed that I used technology so effectively in the classroom. She said, hey, we have this vacancy. I know it's outside of your skill set and your comfort zone, but I would really see if you'd be interested in, in taking this career in technology education job at our school. So I was like, okay, let me think about it. And so I decided to say yes. I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. My school needs me. I'm going to step outside my comfort zone and, and teach a, a new subject that I've never done before. So the entire summer, I had to study for the Praxis two in career and technology education. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I barely passed by like one or two questions, um, but that's all that mattered. You know, I, right. I never took one technology class in college and all of a sudden I'm cramming, you know, for like two <laughs> or three months. And so I barely pass and I end up teaching myself, you know, all these different skills and tools and, um, you know, different ways of learning, which was super fun. Um, And then the very next year after I like Hmm. did a really good job teaching, she said, hey, we have an instructional technology coach Hmm. position that is vacant and I think you'd be perfect for the job. And so again, I said, sure, why not? You know, and, and I filled this role and that's what really led me to, to where I am today because she saw so much potential in me right. and she cared personally and knew that I would be able to do well in almost any other role. And I'm just glad that I said yes, because I learned so much and gained so much from it. And, um, she just really believed in me and, and created lots of opportunities, um, to help me get to where I am today. Well, Anne McCarty, if you're listening, shout out, yeah. shout out. So that, that when you're, when I'm listening to that story, the, the big takeaway for me is really, I think great leaders lead people up, right? Not yep. like they're, they're not necessarily sure they could do something, but they put them in a position where they have to like still grow. And like, I I've talked about this a lot of times and I think I, I, I always struggle with this because um, we always, you know, I shouldn't say always, but a lot of times in, in administration and education, we spent, uh, 90% of our time with 10% of maybe some of the issues that we deal with. Right. And like, you know, our, maybe some of our staff that's struggling and, you know, maybe some of the staff that's like, doesn't like you. Right. And we can do this. And I think what happens a lot of times is that our staff that do really well or have great potential, they, they a lot of times they, they want mentorship. They want to grow and they either, outgrow you and leave or they stay in and they become stagnant and i think a lot of times they just they, they want attention it's not that right you know, but they're like hey they're just fine and i think part of it too is kind of putting in people in positions where they might be a little bit uncomfortable where it's it's like you maybe even as a minister saying like i believe you can do this i'm not sure but i believe you can if you you know put this and i think kind of it's kind of the idea of leading up and so i, I just love, I love that, that idea because, yeah because it is really about um I, I think a lot of times we have so many people who are just really great in the profession who leave because they're not getting support. They're not getting mentorship, right? That they're just getting permission to do stuff, right? And we talked about that before the podcast. right? Uh, and then we're just like, you know what? I'm, I'm not growing here, so I'm going to go somewhere where I can. And uh, it, it's a great loss. I think, you know, we want to, you know, we, we want to get ensure that people get the positions in, in the world that they really love, but we want to really develop great people. So uh, I love that when that was in your first year, because it b- ties in beautifully um, to the last question. When you look back at your career, all the stuff that you do today um, and the impact that you've made in, on educators around the world and your own, your, your schools and kids around the world, um, what advice would you give to your first year teacher self? That's a great question. Um, and it's fun to think about too. You know, I would probably say, um, don't be afraid to make mistakes, mm-hmm. take risks, take creative risks, um, show your students that you're human, um, and that you're not going to get everything, you know, 
done perfectly mm -hmm. that you're willing to embark on this learning journey with them and just be real and just care deeply for your students let them know that you support them and you're going to stand by them no matter what um, you can always be excited about content and that's helpful when getting kids right. interested you know in the subject matter but it's really about the human part i can't remember who said it or where it's from but you know teaching has been said as to be the most human of professions in the world right, right. so just really leaning in on that idea and um you know, just making connections with students and letting them know you care. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because we were talking about, you know, a potential book that you want to write and really that process of learning, right? Exactly. Kind of focusing on that and developing that and growing too. And it's interesting, you know, going through this podcast, you looking back at your career, looking at that, um, I'm sure that you could say, and, and this is something that's really important to me. Uh, if I don't, if you don't look back at the beginning of your career without like some embarrassment, <laughs> you're probably terrible right now. You're, you're probably not very good. And it's not that you weren't doing great things back then. It's just that we all should grow. We should exactly. all grow up, right? Yeah. And th the same is true to me 10 years from now as well, right? Like if I don't look back at this moment 10 years from now and say like, oh, I could have done this better. I could have done, like, right? Like we yeah. should be still growing. It's not like, oh, and hey, well, now I'm in my 40s. I'm done, right? Like, <laughs> I think that's, that's part of it too. So uh, I'm excited to learn more, um, you know, talk more with you and our other podcasts. I'm glad that we, you know, had this chance to catch up and stuff. It's one of my favorite things. Like, I know you asked to, to talk with me today. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm going to make you record a podcast. Then. So Might as well, right? Yeah. Right? So let's do this because uh, I, I think we have a lot to learn from each other. You know, people all over the world can learn from you too. So Brad, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Everyone, thank you for taking the time to listen. I hope you have a wonderful day.